Get across the stick. Well, you want to walk across it? Yeah. Whoa. Your turn. <laughs> no, I'm not going across that. There's no way it'll hold me. <laughs> so this is like a big playground out here. This has been so cool staying in Valdez. Fire pits, there's even more sites down that way. If you're wondering what you could come to this spot with, um, I know we went with Doug to a spot and I'd said 35 feet or less. Anything you want right here, no problem. Uh, 35 foot trailer, you got our 30 foot trailer. 43 foot fifth wheel, 40-ish foot class A. I saw a truck camper and another travel trailer. Anyway, it's everything you could come back here, no problem. But today talking about gear and goal number one is to use some gear I've got, which is my camera gear. And we're hoping to go find some bears this morning since we had no luck yesterday. And we've heard over and over, there's tons of bears in Valdez, like super easy to see. We even, our friends over here even like said, oh yeah, we saw one just driving around town, a bear and some cubs, I think. And then our friend over here in the fifth wheel, they said, oh, I saw four bears. And anyways, we're gonna hope to see some bears this morning. Got to see some bear, two different black bear. No grizzlies, very few brown bear. Hey, what'd you think of that black bear? It was fun. <laughs> was he, was he hungry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So as far as camera gear and what I carry for what I do, um, this is 95% of what we use. But this is a micro four thirds. So everything I've got is double what a full frame is. This is my monopod slash eh, tripod-ish. These are my feet that come out on that. So this can extend up and it holds my main camera at the top. Sort of a long lens in general would be good to have as well. I think one GoPro is really good to have if you're in like a water environment time lapses, all that kind of stuff. And then drones, oh my goodness, drones. There's so many places to fly drones in Alaska. So there's also lots of gear that maybe you think you need or might expect you have to use that honestly we haven't used or haven't needed. I'm gonna show Corey's bikes just cause they're a lot closer and easier to show, <laughs> but he's gotten his bikes out one time since they've done Alaska. We've gotten our bikes out one time and that was in Seward. I think there's some places where we've talked about the balloon fiesta where it's like, you really want your bikes here. I don't know if Alaska is one of those places. Um, it's not that it's a bad idea to have bikes you already got them and got plenty of room that's fine but if you're giving up something that's more important for your bikes i just don't feel like it's as big of a biking destination as a lot of places we've been we haven't carried any spare fuel with us we got a 26 gallon tank but we do get almost 14 miles a gallon so we do pretty well on that so unless you have a really 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 small tank we see people carrying like massive amounts of spare fuel how much spare fuel do you bring 12 extra gallons have you used any i haven't other? touched it since wyoming so, so you actually needed it in wyoming extra 100, 100 extra pounds basically for peace of mind. Just one, if you're gonna, if you want something, just bring one. Yes, I don't think you have to bring like tons. It's, if you've gone through Wyoming or Montana, very similar, like you should usually know if there's a long stretch coming up. If nothing else, if you're super paranoid about it, just fuel up when you're at three quarters of a tank instead of half a tank. Uh, you don't have to carry like massive amounts of fuel. Tires, I would have new or like new tires when you leave and then you don't have to worry about carrying two, three, four spare tires or anything like that. We haven't had any tires go out on us. We carry one spare tire for each vehicle. So we technically have two, one for the Airstream and one for the van um, if you're just doing the main routes in Alaska. Two more things we bought that we haven't used. Uh, we bought a gazebo, I think I showed it in Fairbanks. Still have not gotten that thing out again since then. <laughs> and I also bought uh, like a 60 gallon bladder that folds up. Up. I thought, man, if we need water and we're boondocking, I'll fill up this bladder, but I just, I just don't use it. The problem with the bladder, like you've got to like get out a pump or figure out a way to get the water from the bladder to your RV or vice versa. And then these just work. We use these six gallon water containers. Uh, only two of these are mine. We usually carry two. Uh, Corey has three with him and we wear those out. Uh, if you like to do boondocking, dry camping, that kind of thing. If you're RVing in the East and I was making like a, a list of things you have to have when you RV in the Eastern United States, like 
a lot of this, the bikes might be a higher priority than the water. Who knows? Because there may be way more cool places to bike and way less places to boondock. So it's, it's funny, but for Alaska, um, that's what this list is about. Uh, the water, water jugs are where it's at. So getting into some of the electrical stuff, Cordy says he's really, he, I don't have one of these. He's got this dongle where he doesn't have to haul out. If you've got a 50 amp cord, that thing is heavy, massive, a real oh, pain. Yeah. If you run a generator a lot, like this will save so much time. And it was like $30 at um, Cabela's. Now they don't have solar and uh, we've met lots of people who don't have solar. And then you've got the other family over here that has 1,320 watts of solar. So you've got, it's all over the board in Alaska. My suggestion is if you're already RVing and you're thinking about upgrading, and Corey would agree with this too, if you're thinking, man, I'm, I'm on the edge, should I go with more solar? Should I do lithium or some sort of an upgrade? I would go ahead and do it. I would Now, if you're just starting off, I wouldn't go spend 10 grand doing some massive yeah. upgrade just for Alaska. But if it's the way you're traveling already and yeah. you know you're going to get some use out of it, I think it's a I great idea. Because yeah. I knew I, we, we boondock a lot. I, we should have done it. But in general, I think it's a good idea to have some sort of generator because you can continue to use that even after you upgrade to solar and at least have a decent set of batteries. Also a great idea to get some sort of mud flaps. Well, a lot of people get rock tamers that attach here and then they'll reach down to the ground. But for us, just a decent set of reasonably long mud flaps uh, has worked pretty well. So as far as random tools that I think have to do with Alaska, now some of these are things that I think are a good idea to have in RVing at all in general, but especially if you come to Alaska. First, tire pressure monitoring system. We use EZ Tire. I've got this on every tire, on the trailer, on the van. A windshield repair kit, a roof repair. If your roof starts to leak, you're in the middle of nowhere, it's tough to find Dicor, repair the roof properly. It does a good job of just going straight over where Dicor is already at. Air compressor for your tires. I've got the Vire 400P have a decent kit to do a tire repair if you need to. Uh, you can definitely run in some nails, even rocks, stuff like that. And then this, I love this, because it's like a multi-tool. It does a bunch of things for me at once. To charge up a battery if needed, be a light with a strobe light. It has an adapter, a 12 volt adapter too. So you could charge stuff with this inside the rig if you needed to as well. Hensley, what are you doing? You starting a fire? No, I'm not. Well, what are you doing? I'm making a hole for snakes. Making a hole for snakes? Yeah. Okay. Home. Okay. That's going to be a happy home for snakes. Mm -hmm, yeah. I think that's a great hole for snakes. So cell signal, wireless gadgets, all that kind of thing. So we've got a WeBoost. That's the antenna up there. I get asked all the time, what's that antenna on your roof? <laughs> so as far as cell phones, uh, slash data, slash cell usage and all that, we've tested out a lot of plans going through Canada and Alaska. Uh, we've tested out AT&T prepaid, uh, Verizon postpaid, T-Mobile postpaid, Google Fi. Really the only one we haven't tested out is AT&T postpaid, but we've been around people who've had it through Canada and stuff too. So I can say AT&T postpaid, T-Mobile postpaid, Verizon postpaid, all three of those are great in Alaska. Not too much to worry about. Um, going through Canada though, one thing we learned, AT&T prepaid is junk going through Canada. It's okay in Alaska, <laughs> but going through Canada, like it's, it's almost worthless, honestly. So AT&T postpaid, T-Mobile, Verizon, all great. Uh, Google Fi, I messed with it, not worth it. They get deprioritized in all the towers they're using. Um, you can never get any data out of it. Like you can make emergency calls and text, that's about it. Unless you're really relying on data for work, I would say you're probably gonna be okay with a postpaid plan you already have because they're gonna partner with towers. Unless you need a lot of data. And then when you go through Canada, if you're on Verizon, they cap you at 500 megs. So you might wanna get a second plan for that. But once you get in Alaska, for the most part, all the stuff that worked in the lower 48, all the rules, all the, you know, the caps, all that, it's the same as the lower 48. And the coverage is surprisingly good in Alaska unless you're going off the beaten path and you would kind of probably expect it at that point. Or what the paddleboard on this glacier. We're getting them prepped with two boards. Marissa said she wanted these bad boys. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> this is legit, man. <laughs> we just need to do this as a workout. 
Come on, Corey. Don't make me look weak. <laughs> Too late. I can't even rally. I got nothing. <laughs> That's why it always looks like I never do anything because usually I'm filming this and then when I come over and do it, nobody's filming me. <laughs> Get it. And we need, not this. One there, one there. You ready to do this, babe? I just hope I don't have on too many clothes that I can't move. I just need to make sure this goes on. And <laughs> I'm zooming. I feel like I need a short sleeve shirt on. Just there you like, go, there you go. I'm all pumped up. Yeah. Right? I'm all pumped. Let's see. Tools, usually, but taking one to see. Take that. This thing's really good because it's lightweight uh, to go on our head mount, so. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> don't worry, Marissa's gonna have one on her head. <laughs> Let's do yeah. it. Right. Our RV is over here. And just around this class A is uh, the lake. <laughs> it's crazy that this is like our backyard. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, so this is why we like our bikes, but man, in Alaska, having something that can float on water, if you like to be on water, it's pretty cool. It's pretty epic spot. Now, I'm not sure how the launching is gonna go because it's pretty shallow. So I've got all my usual gear with me. I've got my drone, got my long lens, GoPro, and then in my hand is my GH5 with the 8 to 18 lens and the microphone. So the large majority of the time, this is the setup I've got with me. Oh, look at that reflection. That's oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah. There's ice floating in the water. <laughs> it's gonna be cold. <laughs> it's cold. Marissa doesn't have boots on. She is so brave. You gonna try to go out on your knees first? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> there we go. Good? Have fun, girls. So this is pretty awesome out here. It's almost like somebody has carved like whales <laughs> And I sculpture whales out here is what it reminds us of. You're surrounded by these beautiful mountains with fog and these glaciers back here and icebergs in the water. This is just magical. But yeah, this is what it's about. It's about having the right gear to do the right things that you're interested in as an RVer. Um, I think it'd be tough coming up here like first things an RVer. I think you could, and I think you could rent one. But if you've been RVing for a while, you'll know what style of RVing you like, whether you're gonna boondock a lot or be full hookups. Because that's what a lot of this was about was our style of RVing and how we did Alaska. There's definitely other ways to do Alaska. But the gear we talked about like paddle boards are what we love. You may hate paddle boards. You know, bikes or something else might be a big deal. But And sometimes you don't know what gear you need until you just get out there and we've switched up gear. And we have. I mean, don't let that intimidate you. Don't think that you have to have everything mm -mm. just so to, to go. That was my rhyme. Do you like that? Just so to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Yeah, I don't think Alaska, if you've done Wyoming or Montana, I don't think it's like just drastically different as far as the gear you need if you know your camping style but there are some things like what some of the stuff i mentioned today it's good it's good to have so it's just hard to get sometimes if you don't already that, have it that's when the you're problem up here. <laughs> yeah yeah if you're near anchorage you can get some stuff but it's still tricky it takes a while to ship things up here don't worry about going crazy with everything but if you're on the edge on some things it's a good time to make the excuses hey i'm gonna go ahead and purchase that and do that for Alaska because it's it's worth it. You hate to get up here and like not have a camera, not have a paddleboard, not have, you know, if you think you're on the edge on solar. You don't have to do all that to have a great time for sure. But if you're on the edge, it, it does help. It's nice. But that's our journey. We're cold. Marissa's cold. <laughs> I'm actually, I put on so many layers. I'm actually not that bad right now, believe it or not. I've got on tons of... Uh, yeah, she... <laughs> so I feel well, good. she's warm. I'm cold. I'll put it that way. So uh, I'm getting a little chilly. Uh, we're going to head back to the RV and we will catch you guys later.
break time. It's break time now. Thanks for introducing her to that. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, <you> ready? No! <laughs> <laughs> no.